Hello, Therese back this afternoon. I'm afraid I'm going to have to do a voiceover for this one because my computer's playing up again. Um, we're going to be using sheets of card, 12 by 12 from card book. This is the chosen piece. Now this is for the inside. This will be the outside because it's plain and it won't clash with the slow stitch. First thing we're going to do is measure along the sides. The shorter side is just over 8 inches. Not quite sure why I'm turning the ruler over. I think I'm looking for the centimetres. And then I measure across the top, which is, let me do that now, which is 12 inches. Then fold it the card in half and crease. A nice crease along the centre. Then open it. Now we're going to find the centre of the let me think the left hand side which will be the front opening. This template I made a long time ago and I keep using it when I make cards of this size. It's really useful. It also gives you an indication of how the embroidery is going to look once it's on the front and framed and that looks gorgeous. Now I use wadding when I make a card and it just gives a little bit of padding. See how it's just a little bit spongy. Now we find the centre and I've marked the centres of the four sides in red. So there's the crease. And just making sure that this is the same size and that it will fit from the crease to the side of the card. And now we're going to cut out the middle bit, the aperture, and that's the piece that the sewing will uh, be placed against, so you get a nice frame around it. With a nice pencil, draw around the frame. You see that makes quite a nice even um, aperture, the sides are quite even there. Now using a sharp, uh, a sharp, um, uh, sorry, a sharp knife, a craft knife and a straight edge and I'm using an old book that I, to lean on, I'm using an old book that I use for this purpose. and nice cuts along the pencil mark. Now some people don't like doing this because they find the corners a little bit tricky. And I found the spine of the book was in the way and it was causing just a little bit of um, a bumpiness. Now if you, if you start your cutting at the corner from where you finished off the last cut and then just press it out. Here I hadn't cut it so the cuts met so I've had to very very carefully just cut where it's still joined. And just be careful with this that you don't pull the aperture out, otherwise you could tear the front of the card. You see this bit here? Now I've got to straighten that up. And it's easy enough to do, it isn't a problem if you only have a little, little um, mistake if you like. So there you go, that was easy wasn't it? That isn't straight, so I'm going to need 
to straighten that up. And this is always a dodgy bit, keeping it straight and only cutting off the bit that you want to cut off. That was quite um, a wide piece actually. And the same along there. But it's a very it's a very simple process. Right, just checking the sides. And there you have it. Now this is the piece that we will be making later. As you can see it's all running stitch, a few beads and some straight stitch. There are the beads, scattered beads there. Running a uh, straight stitch there. Now that's placed on the wadding. The wadding is just slightly smaller than the embroidery because you want the edges of the fabric to um, glue to the back of the card and not just glue to the wadding. Now using a, a strongish glue, the Yoohoo, but not too much because it does smell, carefully place the embroidery on the wadding. And there, it's as simple as that. And just, what was it, two, three, tiny, tiny drops, and it's stuck. Now I'm, trimming the wood in here to make sure that the sides of the fabric are longer than the wood in I'm just showing the uh, well that's not very good camera work is it I'm just showing you there how far the fabric protrudes from the wood in And there's the frame and this is the exciting bit because now it starts to look like a card now you can use that glue around the edge if you want to but I'm very aware that it smells and the smell can linger for quite a while so I prefer the double-sided tape and this this one is one inch wide So we all know how to put this down and how difficult it is to get off. I have lots of trouble with this, especially the finer tape. Oh, that was easy. Mind you, there are three more to go. And this is a very, very strong tape. And once it's down, it's you can't take it off the paper because it takes the paper with it. It's the strongest tape I've ever had. But it's good for holding fabric down and stronger pieces of paper and card. there and I do overlap my my um, double sided tape at the corners I don't suppose it makes much difference really but it's just a bit easier and then the last side and this is all in um, real time, so you can see how quickly it takes. At the moment, it's take to get this far with all the technical things as well. It's taken nine minutes and fifty seconds, so that isn't bad, especially if you have a friend visiting and you've forgotten that it's their birthday. <laughs> you quickly. 
actually sit in the bedroom and make a card. <laughs> now we're going to place the frame very, very carefully over the slow stitch because once that is stuck, once the contact's made between that sticky tape and the and the fabric, that's it. It's there now. There's no way of moving that. If you have a pocket, I've caused a pocket there. Just lift the card up and flatten it out. That's no problem. Now that is secured there. I thought the aperture might cover o might might be used to cover over the back, but obviously it's too small. So I've decided to use this pink striped card from the same 12 by 12 inch pack and you can get some beautiful packs now and that is sticking to the sticky tape that you've already applied and that is why the wadding needed to be one of the reasons the wadding needed to be smaller and there we are that is the outside now of the card quite lovely isn't it I'm looking at it now it's in front of me I mean lovely it's not meant to go that way but because I'm having trouble um, getting it in the camera I've moved the book it's very very awkward to get something that long in the camera now I'm pointing out here that there's a little bit of excess card that needs to be trimmed. I suppose you could leave it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Hmm, have I left it? Let me check. No, I've trimmed that off. And that's the centre bit where you would decorate that with a verse or some pictures, your message, tiny bit of yoo-hoo or strong glue down the crease. Be, be careful not to press, to use too much pressure with that. You don't want too much glue spreading everywhere. And then carefully match that to the crease. And there it is. I'm saying there you could actually put another piece in there. I think it would make a nice journal cover as well. It's the makers of a journal there. So once again, I'm trying to put it on the table so you can see. And it, it really doesn't stand that way, but it stands upright. So here we have my finished example. And we're going to use this um, just as inspiration for the next part for your slow stitch card. So I'll stick that out of the way for a moment. Now I've already cut out, to save time, I've cut out what we need for this. And what we need is a piece of backing 5 by 7 inches. Now this is the same backing that I've used on my card. Now this time we're not going to use a calico on the back as a base fabric because we're going to have some modding later on. And to have the calico, it will end up being just a little bit too thick. So we're going to leave it like this. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> the backing fabric, I should say. Now, there's two nice uh, ways to use this. One is this way, which is actually the right side. And I used that side last time. Or this one. And that is the back. And I think that is lovely. 
so I think this time I'm going to use the wrong side yeah that is gorgeous I like that let me just compare that I don't know if you can see the backing on this one if you can just see here I have actually used the right side unless that's the wrong side as I've said before it's so difficult with some fabrics to tell the right side from the wrong but I'm calling this the wrong side it could actually be that side but hey ho never mind we're going to use this side this time so I've actually cut out several flowers it's going to be another flower themed one so look at this great big one I mean I don't know what made me cut that out it's far too big for anything but look <laughs> look how lovely that is <laughs> obviously can't use it this time but I will Put that away and we'll, um, you'll see that again. Right, so let's get on with the job in hand. So we need to place these pieces, loads, of, loads and loads of flowers there. So I'm not sure which ones we're going to use yet. I, I like that effect on there. But let's see how we get on. Right, so I'm going to plough through these flowers. Um that one it's a possibility um maybe orange i'm not sure about orange that one i think is another one that's too big put that one over there these are pretty could actually make those cut those into two. Ah, oh, it's the right side there ah oh, yes so far so good i'm not sure about that orange i'm going to put that onto one side once again, I really don't want to overthink this. Another red. I'm going to keep the flowers to red and pink. Oh, don't having said that. Oh, a nice gold one there. And that might change things a bit. Pink there. I've got a nice satin or machine a machine satin stitch one there and that is a really nice pink but it's not coming out on the camera it's actually nice the wrong way round as well no I like this this is a nice burnt ready brown colour but that isn't coming out too well either so far I'm going to settle on those I don't want to waste too much time doing this that's lovely but I think that is too big look at that actually looks like a rose a real rose and I have some bits of lacy things here right and I do like that but I wonder if that might be too much and a little bit a little flower there right, I'm going to, I've got some lacy things there as well I'm going to stick with these put that over there I just want to see I want these just want to see if there's some way of although the background is sort of glistening it's shimmering and shaking under the, the light no I, I think that's going to be really out of place unfortunately right so let's see how we get on with these right so yes I do like that now this one has a straight edge which we can lose oops this one has a straight edge which we can lose at the side here or we can lose underneath something else so we bear that in mind these two might go there you know what I think it looked better when I just threw them on oops and that one there thing is as you're actually sewing this there's nothing to stop you changing your mind and moving it around let's take that off I wonder if because this is so gold and it's such a different color that is going to catch the eye wherever it is so perhaps we actually need that in the middle and that way we won't have to balance that up 
if we kept it up there we'd have to balance it maybe here which we could do with this because there's gold in that but let's see if we can arrange it there Um, that's the one with the straight edge we want some of the background showing not much but half the fun of doing this is having the negative shapes um, shine through the background and the negative shapes are those shapes that are formed that are empty like this if you look at between the branches of a tree you have the branches that's the positive shape and the shapes between the branches are the negative shapes they're sort of empty but sometimes the negative shapes are actually more um sorry i've got sidetracked then are actually more lovely than the uh, positive shape so bear that in mind oh i don't know now where's my um Frame gone. Oh, there. Let's just see. Get a rough idea of what this will look like. Because this is the size as the, of the appy chart, as you know. Oh, I don't know. As you know, there's something there. I mean, there's something there that I'm not too. Um, that's not doing it for me, and I'm not sure if it's these two together. I'm inclined to think I'm going to make a start and let it develop in its own way as I um, carry on, as I start. And if that means taking some off and rearranging them, then um, so be it. That's what, what I'll do. But I really didn't want to overthink. I'm trying to stop doing that and to be... A bit more spontaneous in my designs. <laughs> Let's turn that round. That's how it will be. Oh, I don't know. That looks quite good. I'm going to leave it like that. This is when you need someone to say, no, no. Move the pink one and move the gold one. And we'll see how it goes. Perhaps even if that leaf, that petal comes over there. Hmm, right, let's make a start with this anyway. So I'm going to pin this in place. If you feel happier, you can, um, I'm looking for my glue stick, my, can't see it. But if you feel a bit ha more happier, um, you can actually just put a tiny dab of glue stick on the back to hold it in place. Bearing in mind that um, if you want to move it, you're going to have to, have to be very gentle when you move some of these finer fabrics because you could tear them if you just rip them off, especially if it's a, a strong glue stick like Pritt or Yoohoo. So that's staying like that. Now the slow stitch is as we've done all the way along, I'm going to start with a running stitch. This is running stitch, the example, as you know, this is all running stitch. And what I've done on this piece, instead of doing the running stitches backwards and forwards, just like that, from side to side, or up and down, I followed the contours of the shapes of the petals. You see that? You can possibly see it in the darker colours here. So I followed the contours. So we've got a variety of shapes. We've got a nice round curvaceous shape there to a pointed shape here. Um, and almost a straight shape there. Oh, definitely straight there. So I think I'm going to do the same on the... the piece we're working on now I'm going to follow the contours of the leaves but you don't have to do it on the petals you don't have to do that you can do whatever you want 
Right, so let's start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this piece here. You see these two together? I'm going to do that shape there because there's a lot of overlap in here. So by securing that piece down, we'd actually secure that piece and that piece as well. Now, problem is, I don't know whether to do that as one shape all the way around, or two. I think I'll do it as two. Now, that's a bit of a raggy edge there. I didn't see that. I don't like that. So I'm going to just lift that piece up and put that leaf there. Hmm. can't really see the point of having that there now you can't see it so as time goes on I might actually cover that up but let's make a start anyway so um, <coughs> excuse me now I'm going to start here so all I'm going to do now it doesn't matter that that's sticking over because the frame of the card will take up half inch all the way round by sticking it down so that half inch all the way round the edge is just a tiny bit wasted really right and so tiny running oh I'm not even on the camera tiny running stitches all the way round now I've used three strands of thread here see that three strands of thread and a needle that I can tell already is too big for this this fabric because there's a little bit of a tug bringing it out it's okay pushing it down but bringing it out is a little bit of a tug so now I'm going to do this all the way around couple of rows in each like the the example card now don't forget you can vary the size of your stitch it gives it added interest oops not that much I've turned the <laughs> I've turned that into a sharp point so I will carry on with this and then I will get back to you as soon as it's done. The nice thing about this is that it doesn't take a long time. Some of those examples, you'll know if you did care, if you did do some. Some of those um, pieces from the journal, the slow stitch journal, took seven hours to do. But this won't take any, anything like that. The card that, I, that I've used for the example. I did last night with my daughter. My daughter was here, and um, we put the TV on, and she's she was talking, and we were having you know coffee and something to eat, and really nice you know mum daughter time. Before I knew it, I'd actually um, finished. So it this is a very nice, easy thing to do, and I think for those who did do anything out of the journal um, it's just something pleasant to do because doing that journal was quite tough it was hard going for anybody who did who kept up and well done because I found it hard going and I thought goodness this is what I do but it was <laughs> it was tough but hey <laughs> <laughs> what a nice feeling to have achieved it. Now I'm almost round to the beginning. Well, I'm in spitting distance as they say. And then I'm just going to carry on. Like I was three minutes ago when I said I'm going to carry on and do this. So. Here we go. And I should change this needle. Crikey, I've zoomed in a bit too far. My hands look absolutely enormous up there. 
Crikey, they're not really that big, I think. <laughs> right, now you can do it all in one colour, or you can do as I did and change the colour and do each row differently. Now, what you're going to do, if you're going to follow the row round, you're going to create related lines where one line is very much influenced or related in shape and flow to another one. No, I always love that effect. Right, I'm going to, I've caught that up there, so I'm going to have to move that gold there. Oh gosh, I think it might look better there. Anyway, I'm going to say ta-ta here, and I'll get back to you very, very soon. You won't notice that I've gone. So within two seconds, I'll be back. <laughs> so I'll speak to you again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. And here they are. This is the sample one that you saw earlier. And this is the one that I've just finished making. As you can see, it's very much like the sample one. But I've made a few changes on this one. I did cut the two flowers apart, I separated them. I haven't used beads on it. And what was the last one? Oh, and I cut a bud off, I think it was from here, from this flower here. Apart from that, it's basically the same, although, as you can see, I did add a ribbon around there, and that goes inside there. So making up was the same as for this one, except for the rows. The stitches used were just straight stitch and running stitch. And that was it. A couple of hours to produce a really nice card. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, before I go, I must apologise for the quality of the, the audio on the last, the, the middle segment of this video. There's something wrong with the with my microphone at the moment. That is why the first part of the video was actually a voiceover. The second part was a voice, but it was muffled. So I'm really hoping, and fingers crossed, that this part will come out fine. So having said all that, thank you for joining me. I do hope it's inspired you to have a go at making these. They'd also actually make nice journal fronts. Um, as I was putting these together, I thought another couple of pages inside and that would be like an exercise book or a journal or whatever you wanted. So, until I see you again or speak to you again, have a good day, um, take care and I'll see you soon. So, bye-bye.